I bought a bender. I bought a pipe bender. Cheap one from Arbor Freight. I bought some pipe. This is rigid aluminum conduit. Um, and I'm gonna make a T-top. I wasn't gonna make a T-top because I didn't have a way to bend this pipe 90 degrees. And I still don't. But I saw a video on YouTube by a guy named Jack. And he goes by Jack Daddy Customs. And he made a pretty nice looking uh, T-top just by bending 45s with this exact same setup. So I'm gonna give it a go. And my camera's dead, I'm filming with a phone, which is a little problematic, but uh, we're gonna get started. I purchased two inch pipe and kind of before I even started, I realized it was too big. Um, for one thing, it looks bad, but for the, the main thing is the, the um, radius of the bends were so long they were overlapping and it was causing it to kink because I couldn't fit it in the bender correctly. So uh, I just screwed up one piece of pipe. I went back and swapped the other ones. I'm going to do it with inch and a half pipe. Now this is pipe, not tubing. So it's inch and a half on the inside and almost two inches on the outside. If it was inch and a half tubing, it'd be inch and a half on the outside. But pipe measures different from tube. So I just think it's going to look a whole lot better and it's going to be way easier to get all my bends in. I learned from messing with the four inch the two inch pipe that you really need to grind these edges off it. The factory edges are real rough and jagged and they're leaving uh, marks in the pipe. So I put the flapper on them, clean them up a little bit and hopefully the pipe will come out with some little bit cleaner bends. So the first thing I did was cut the threads off of the end and cut it square with my miter saw. That's one advantage of working with aluminum. You can use woodworking tools. And this is going to go roughly here, so I'm going to mark my first bend. Mark the inside radius. I'm going to bend it right here, and I'm going to measure that so I can get the other side the same. So this is my gauge for my first bend. It's a 45, really, but this big lump, these longer sticks help you get it straight. And you just slide the pipe on top of the die and put a roller on top. And you crank until it bends, it's pretty, it's a very low tech machine, but it works. Get off the jack. See what it looks like. Now I had too much spring back, so let's bend it a little more. That's it. So I changed my little wooden template for the second angle. And I got the pipe flipped upside down in the bender. And I got a measurement and I got a mark. Um, boy, can you see that? So, and I got a mark on the pipe and I got it lined up with the center, with the center of the bender. So on the bend, I just gotta make sure I don't go too far. Well, it took quite a few tries in and out of the bender. I didn't want to over bend it, so I kept taking it out and checking it, but I got it now. So now we need to make a bend starting here and starting to come around this way. So this will go, I'll have to bring this mark all the way around here and record that measurement in my book. So this one should bend up until this is parallel with that or until that is parallel with this. So it's less than a 45, so this one shouldn't be too bad. So my first vertical is 100% bent and uh, it just basically follows the console. Now I need to go and bend another one to match it. That'll be a little more tricky. I have to get it more or less the same. That was surprisingly easy. It took some time. Because once you overbend it, you're screwed. You can't unbend them. But uh, I think they're very, very close to being identical. 
So now we bend the front tubes and they're much simpler than these. End of day one, we have the four verticals and they came out really, really well. Um, a little tool, takes a little while to kind of get to hang, takes a little while to get develop some speed on putting the pipe in and out. There's really no skill level with the thing. But uh, yeah, super. Tomorrow we'll cut some horizontals and maybe tack this thing together. Um, the side frames anyway. Okay, we're getting set up, so we might start welding today on the T-top. Um, first of all, my slab in here is not flat. It's sloped in two different directions for drainage. So brought in the table from outside, and I shimmed it up level. And I spent some time grinding and sanding and scrubbing the top because it's been outside for a couple of years. It was pretty gross. So now it's clean. I'm drying it off, so this will be a good flat surface to lay out the parts and weld them together. Um, and then I'm going to need to pull out my um, MIG machine, metal inert gas, and I have to take the blue bottle and put it on this machine, and I need to redo it. So instead of welding with the regular tip, I'll be welding with the spool gun. So I'll just have to spend some time moving some stuff around. So i got my verticals standing up, kind of clamped into place. And there's no right or wrong here, but I got them where I think I want them. So did some measurements between the legs at the bottom. Inside measurement is 28 and a quarter. And I'm going to have a brace here above the door. So this is 43 and three quarters up, and this will be horizontal. And this right here is vertical, and this is vertical. So I'm going to use that information, lay it out on the table. Um, this is my inside measurements. That's my horizontal center line. I'm going to lay these tubes out, and that should give us a measurement for that um, horizontal board, horizontal tube. Well, actually, it's pipe. We can cut it, and that'll be our first weld. Okay, for some reason, this table only has one 90 degree corner. That's this one. So all my measurements were off this side and this side. I got. Um, these are my interior measurements, and I got the tube clamped, and I got it weighted on the far end, and the same with this one. So that should be where they're going to end up. And then I put the level across here and put a little dot, and that should be the measurement for all practical purposes is square, 90 degree. This one's like a 20 degree, so this is kind of messing with my head. It's not straight. So I think I'm going to try to cut, I'm going to use a, a hole saw to cut the notches. I bought a brand new one, it fits the pipe. I think I'll tr play with, I got, if I use this piece of pipe, I got several inches to ruin. I think I will uh, attempt to get my 20 degree set up. And the way I did that was, I don't have a milling machine, I just have a drill press. I turned my 90 degree, I mean my 20 degree, and I measured over four and a half inches until I got to an inch and a half. So um, if I put an inch and a half shim under the pipe in the drill press, four and a half inches from one edge, I should get pretty close to 20 degrees. I'm going to set it up. Let's see what happens. Okay, here's my setup. The pipe, the aluminum is touching here. And then I came over about four and a half inches and I put this piece of uh, two by which is an inch and a half and that got it which I, to I think is the right slope. Clamped it between some scraps so that my uh, hole saw wouldn't hit my vise. And I don't know whether the drill bit's going to start. I might have to drill a pilot hole but let's give it a shot.
Okay, so we got another cope at an angle. I like it. So this is my cut, and it fits pretty good. What happened was when it got halfway through, the bit wouldn't cut any deeper. I had to cut some waste off. It's no big deal. Um, looks like it might have could have been a little steeper. It's hard to tell because it may change as I go down. So from dot to dot, it measures 18 and an eighth. And that would be the center of the pipe, which is the long point here. So I measure 18 and an eighth, but I need this mark on this side, so I scroll it around with the speed square. And it would have been better if I would have put a center line before I drilled, because I could have used the same center line for this one. But I think I got it pretty close. So this is a, should be the center of this cope. And this is just a 90 degree drill. So piece of cheese. Let's uh, see what happens. Perfect. Almost. Needs to go that way an inch. Needs to be centered on this chalk line, not on the edge. The cuts are awesome. I think I'll get the flat disc and just sand on it a little bit until it slides up into place. Okay, it took a little sanding, but I got it fitting almost perfectly. Um, it's ready to weld. I'm not going to weld it. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to go home and do epoxy and polyester resin while it's warm. First crossbar tacked in place, and I temporarily tacked in place a brace at the bottom just to kind of keep it from being wonky. And while I got it all bolted down and straight, I decided to um, take care of the tops. I'm making it 80 inches tall. So um, 80 inch falls here, 80 inch falls there, and that will be a cope. And, and that will be a cope. And that will catch the, um, the sideways bars on the top part. They'll sit right into that cope. So I just need to drill straight down. I'm going to drill by hand and try to cope half of it with it in place and then we'll flip it over and catch the other half. I'm going to have to do it by hand. I, I can't hold it in the drill press. Okay, with the two frames tacked together <clears throat> They are very, very close. This one's in like a quarter inch, but there's that much spring in it. So, call the frames good for now. I'm going to start making the top part. Um, the frames will have more braces, but that's going to be a smaller pipe, smaller diameter. Okay, my first two bends for the top part. I bent 245s, and it came out to be a pretty good 90, which is what I'm after. Now, I can call this the front. And then I would have to bend two more 45s and have that come back parallel with that. But it would need to be an exact spacing. It needs to be five feet one apart. I'm not so sure that I can get that quality control. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where these bends are going to end up. So I think I'm going to do the other side, bend two 45s, let the front overlap until I get my five foot one spacing and cut them to fit and weld the front. And then the back, I think I might square it off um, that would solve a lot of problems, or a lot of challenges, not problems. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm ta I got one more stick. I probably have to get some more. I'm going to do the 245s to get a 90, and uh, then we can trim them to get them out proper width. Got both the long top pieces bent, 245s. They came out to a good 90, and I have my five foot mark on the table parallel with that side, and that's how wide I want the top. So I just put them in there, overlap, I'm going to whack this off here, and butt weld them together, try to get a good weld. Okay, it's ready to weld, let's see what kind of damage I can do with the spool gun. I'm getting ready to cut the cross pipes. It should be easy. I'll just measure across from the left side to the left side, and I get 58 and a 16th. So I drilled my first hole on this end. I find it's been easier to pre-drill the pilot holes with just a regular drill, and then the hole saw will uh, follow that hole. So, drill the hole as close to the end as I could, 
Use the angle iron to get a straight edge, get a straight line to keep the hole centered. I measure my 58 and 16. I'm going to drill a hole there, and then I'm going to um, go to the drill press and do the hole saw. And since the hole saw is the center of the circle, and I measure from the center of the pipe, should be copacetic. Everything should be copacetic. So they match. I got two matching ones. They're going to get welded. Um, well, one of them gets welded there, one of them gets welded further back. And the spacing has to match the spacing of the verticals. So I think I'll weld one and then turn the vertical upside down to make sure the second one's in the right spot. Here I'm using a little piece of angle iron to get a straight line down the pipe because I want the 45 on the other end to be lined up with the 45 on this end. And it's kind of hard to do just looking at them. You really need a, a line to go by. And if I keep this line to the top, it will help me make a uniform curve when I bend it. And this is one inch pipe um, and I'm bending an arc in it to keep the canvas snug instead of just having the top flat. And I'm bending the middle part with the uh, bendy, bender just a little bit. And the rest, I'm just kind of bending my hand. It bends easy. Um, I think I have a little more control doing that. And actually, if you overbend it, you can turn it over and get some of the bend out. So I'm trying to get, I think there were four of them total. Got the bends all matching pretty good, just mostly doing it by hand. So these bowed pipes are one inch and even though I'm fitting the one inch to the inch and a half, the same hole saw would make a perfect joint um, to fit the one inch but I don't have a way to hold it because it would only be like the outside edge of the hole saw would be cutting the pipe and I just don't have a setup to do that. So I just cut a 45 with the miter saw and I did a lot of grinding and sanding until they fit well and once one end fit. I could uh, go mark the other end, the length, go to 45, and grind and fit it until it fits, or yes. So when you're welding with steel wire, like you're welding steel or stainless steel, you put a big roll, big spool, in the red welding machine that's right behind me, like a 10 pound roll. And the machine pushes the wire through the whip, and it comes out at the end and puts electricity in it, and it melts it, and that's how it works. But the aluminum wire is so soft that it can't push it that far. It will just crumple up and get stuck in the whip. So this is called a spool gun and it's got a little one pound spool in the gun and it's got an electric motor. So when you pull the trigger, it, uh, it turns that little spool and feeds wire and electricity and it kind of splatters the melted wire and that's how it works. I don't know if it's possible to have too much stuff, too much man stuff, but I'm getting close. Because I looked over here and I saw this piece of aluminum and I thought, damn, why didn't I use that? And then I realized I got more of these. So I looked around, I couldn't find them. I haven't touched these in years. And I found them. I got them stored behind my big sawhorses here. So this is awesome. Now this is actually I believe two inch tubing which means it's two inches on the outside and I'm using inch and a half pipe which means it's 1.9 on the outside so it's not an exact match but man it's got to be close it's gonna be close actually it looks like it so okay so we're gonna use two of these for the back corners and then I'll still have two cor two of these for uh, tying in the t-top to the to the um, console. So I gotta, I'm gonna have to cut these shorter, put a piece in the middle, and I'll make this back come around with these two nice factory 90s. Sweet.
Okay, so I welded two of the 90s together with a straight piece to get the overall width correct. And then I clamped an angle up here to pull a tape measure because it's so hard to get the tape measure to stay on these round tubes. And I pulled it till it's six foot eight on the back side of this pipe, which will make the um, overall top six foot ten. And then I marked where I need to cut these pipes. Mark here and mark there. And now I'm going to bring the miter saw over here and try to cut it in place because I can get my best cut with that miter saw, not with the hand grinder. I get it crooked if I try to cut it with a hand grinder. So let's see how this works. So the back horseshoe is fitted and clamped into place and uh, I'm going to weld it. It's pretty good. So the two side frames are set where I think they look pretty good. I need to leave room for this ice chest. This is kind of a generic ice chest for fishermen. So they're going to be 37 inches apart center to center. I'm really, I'm really not sure why they're not falling down because they're just standing there. So at 37 inches, I got the top pretty much welded out and I'm going to turn the legs upside down and put them on the top um, and make them 37 inches and then square everything up and put a tack on them I think and then I'll do a trial run to make sure everything's copacetic before I weld it all out. The side frames are sitting where I think they need to sit pretty reasonable fit. They're almost plumb. I've just got them held up there with these sticks and these clamps. I'm going to put some weld where the legs hit the top. I'm going to put some temporary crisscross braces, probably some with, with some scrap aluminum and weld it a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it right side up on the table. And then I'm going to put the console underneath it because I want to see the whole thing in place before I make um, so much weld that I can't get it off. So, yeah, hit, hit it with a little weld right now. of the fact that it uh it hit the beam overhead I couldn't get it up and half of my clamps fell off that was keeping it from breaking because I don't have a whole lot of weld on this thing managed to uh, get it upside down with no drama and Getting the console up there wasn't easy, but I got it up there, and man, I'm really happy with the shape and the proportions and the size. So, what I need to do is weld the little feet on the bottom of each post to get it up to the proper elevation. Then I'm going to need to spend some time in getting both the console and the T-top anchored down so it won't move, because as I start adding up braces, it needs to be um, where it needs to be and right now it's kind of wobbly and wonky so good spot to end this video it's getting kind of long um, so next time we'll start adding all the appurtenances to this uh, structure and do it'll be more tedious kind of finicky work okay thanks for watching